call this kind of uh, uh, system is the, uh, a siloed identity management system. So do you think uh, still this is exist? How many of you think like that? Seems to, okay, one. Yeah, even if you think in the Silicon Valley, there are uh, some organization, not the same uh, pattern, but some of the features are used in their deployment. So, uh, so uh, in this organization, in the Kermit Corporation, there's an employee called uh, John Lee. So since he need to access this uh, application, he need to create an account in each of these uh, applications. So, okay, sorry. What are the challenges that he face in this Kermit Corporation? The first thing is the same physical user digitally represented in each application. If you uh, remember, in the one application, he has a one account called John, again, John L and John D. Likewise, he, he has to create many accounts. At the same time, uh, he has to manage their cred his credentials. He may use the same credentials, or sometimes he may use different credentials. So this is kind of a one issue. The second thing is, let's say he need to log into one application. He will log into the first time. Then he want to move to the ne next application. Again, he has to log in. And again, he has to log in. So there's no single sign-on involved in this pattern. And the next thing is, if you think about the developer perspective, he has to think about the identity, identity management as, as, aspect. At the same time, he need dealing with uh, his core business logic. So this is the issue. So if he did some mismanagement in the identity space, this would be a, a big issue for the organization. The th third thing is integration. So in these applications, there were no integration at all. So if you think the industry today, so always it grows with the uh, acquisitions, mergers, and partnership. Let's say the Kermit Corporation is ready for, to make a partnership. But what about the, the, the applications? Those are not ready for the integration, right? This is a big issue. If the, the underlying applications are not ready, even the, the, the business level agreed to do this, they can't go for this. This is the CEO of the Kermit Corporation. He understood the, the situation. There's no way to move forward with this pattern. So there is our new guy. Uh, he's an IAM architect. So, uh, CEO recruit Dave to fix this issue. So, Dave is going to go step by step approach to fix this uh, issue. Let's see how he's uh, doing this. So, first he identify he need to take off the identity management part from the application to another place. So, he introduced a, a centralized identity management solution. So, still this application talk with the proprietary uh, standards, right? So even if they need to bring a new application to the system, still we can't do that because we are using the, the proprietary AP. Now, uh, they've understood this and he introduced the, the open standard. For the, the single sign-on, he may use SAML 2.0 or uh, OpenID Connect to the provision the users, to move the users around the system, he may use the scheme. And now, if we need to bring a new application to the system, if that application is capable of talking open standard, now we can integrate this application easily. So we can call this uh, system as an open platform, open for the integration. There's no vendor locking in this system. So is Dave happy now? Not yet. Sometimes Dave might have listened to the Sagar store, so he know. The CIAM is a key, right? What are the factors we need to consider when you're talking about the CIAM? So the consumers may like to bring their own identity. If they are, have a Facebook identity, they will bring it. So the system should be able to integrate with those systems. So that's the one aspect. And again, the users may use different devices. Now you may use your mobile phone. Once you go to the office, you may use your laptop. But the experience should be the same. So we need to develop a system that should cater this omnichannel access. The next key point is the privacy. I consider this is a kind of the privacy revolution is happening. So our system should be able to handle this privacy-related aspects. The consent management is a one 
uh, aspect in the privacy. And again, user should have the capability to manage uh, his personal data within whatever the system. Let's say uh, I'm a patient, so I need to share my uh, information with my doctor, right? It means uh, I need to uh, delegate the access to my resource to another party. Doctor is another party. So I may share all the information with my doctor. But to pay the hospital bill, I need to share some of the information with uh, my insurance company. So I don't share all the information I shared with the doctor, but set of features I'll share with the insurance company. So this is the problem we need to uh, uh, handle with party-to-party uh, -party, uh, access delegation. So the, this is kind of a CIMA system in Glance. So uh, we have to connect or integrate with uh, the well-known identity providers, and we need to connect with uh, many devices. So and again, the CIMA platforms are not all in one system, right? So we need to connect with other systems. Uh, in CIMA, the one concept is the progress profiling. It means we first get the set of information of the user, and we progressively build the user's profile, right? In this system, uh, we have the Commit Corporation has connected with the Salesforce. So once we onboard the users, we provision that user to the Salesforce, so we build the user's profile there. So the advantage is we get a good con uh, understanding about the customer, so we can provide the personalized experience to the customer in the later. So in that case, we need to act, uh, integrate with the uh, systems like Salesforce. So to be a success in business, what we need? We need to satisfy our customer. To satisfy the customer, we need to provide a seamless experience and a personalized experience. To provide this experience, we need to integrate with different systems. So how do we integrate? To integrate, we need the APIs. We need identity APIs. So that's why I am saying the identity APIs are the coolest thing in identity integration space. OK, Dave is happy now because he has achieved what he was asked to do. But he's a guy, he think about the future as well. What is the future? IoT. So it is expected there would be 30 billion devices connecting to the internet at the end of 2020. So if you go to a target in the main cities, you can see there are open uh, house or open home uh, uh, store. There are all the toys are connected to the internet. Uh, your water bottle is connected. Your home theater system is connected. Everything is connected. So that is the, uh, the landscape of uh, identity of things. There are other challenges. What are those challenges? So let's say there are 30 billion devices. Can we go and register those devices? No. There should be a way them to dynamically come and register. And how about they communicate with each other? If, if uh, one sensor send a message to another thing, we have to authenticate. We have to face that challenge as well. And again, how do we delegate the access to these devices? If we have a security camera system in our home, we don't uh, let the access to these uh, cameras to our house. So if she asks for the access, at that time, we should be able to uh, delegate the grant to handle or move these cameras. So uh, that is the the. Uh, access delegation requirement that comes into the uh, IoT scenario. Okay, let's see what are the modern identity APIs that can be used to build these kind of systems. First thing is the identity provisioning. The scheme is the modern uh, identity provisioning uh, protocol, which is uh, based on uh, uh, REST and uh, JSON. So this, this was initiated around 2011, and this allows you to the provision users from a system to another system. There are two main roles uh, with the scheme. Uh, one is the, uh, the client role and the server role. So if we develop an identity provider, or if we bring an identity provider to our system, that should be uh, act both roles. So, it should uh, allow to other system to provision the users to the system through the scheme. And at the same time, it should be able to 
provision users to other systems as well. So we use uh, inbound uh, provisioning and outbound provisioning uh, terms for that scenario. So uh, these are the uh, standard uh, user creation and group creation requests. So mainly a scheme is used for the, the user and group related operations. So it supports for the, all the CRUD operations and uh, it has uh, filtering, pagination, sorting supports as well. And scheme define uh, standard claim sets, but in your organization we have to deal with uh, another claims uh, specific to our organization. So, uh, Skim has that capability as well, so it uh, allows you to define your custom claims as well. Auth2.0. Auth2.0 is the de facto standard for the access delegation. So Auth2.0 is a kind of a framework uh, that defines how an application gets an limited access to your resources on behalf of you. So there are different ways you can get the, this limited access. So these scenarios we uh, call those are as a different grant type. So these are the main uh, commonly used grant types. The authorization code uh, initially used for the web applications, but now we are using the other scenarios like mobile app integrations as well. Likewise, it, the, uh, then let's say we have already SAML token. It means we have implemented our system uh, to single sign-on with SAML. So now we have a SAML token. So how do we access a backend API now? We need to get an access token. So then we can use the SAML to bear a grant type. So we exchange the SAML token with an OT2 token. Then again, the JWT authentication is a common uh, in this type. So if we have a JWT token, Again, we can exchange this uh, JWT token uh, with an Auth2.0 token. And the, the last thing is we can, there's an application to application communication. For that thing, we can use this client credential grant type. So uh, the, this application will get a consumer key and the secret. So we using those things, we, get a, we can get a token for representing this application. Uh, this is the basic uh, authorization code grant flow. So I'll uh, discuss key uh, APIs associated here. One thing is the dynamic client registration. So how do we register application? We can use the uh, dynamic client registration API, then the token API to talk and get the access token, then the introspection API, because once we get an uh, access token, we need to verify that token, whether this is a valid or not. So we can use the introspection API. Then another special point is, sometimes we may have to revoke that token. We have to limit the access. Then we can use the revoke API. This is not here anyway. This also used. So we discussed about the access delegation. Now how do we authenticate? So OIDC is a protocol which build on top of the Auth2.0 framework. There, we use a special scope called OpenID. So once we uh, send the OpenID scope with the normal uh, Auth2 request, we get a JWT token with the user's information. So with that JWT token, we can verify who the user is. And again, let's say we need more information about the user. So JWT specification introduces another API called user info. So you can talk to this user info API with the access token you got, and you can get additional information you need about this user. So this is an OpenID Connect flow. There you can see, apart from the authorization code flow, uh, we send the uh, OpenID scope, and we will get an ID token uh, with an access token. So you remember that uh, uh, how I share my information with the doctor. So that is the party-to-party -party delegation. So UMA is a uh, the standard that built for uh, this party-to-party -party delegation. So this also built on top of the uh, O2.0 framework. Uh, there are uh, main four actors. The resource owner who own the resources. Uh, the resource server where we store the resources the authorization server 
who decide the authorization level. Uh, and the fourth thing is the requesting party, who request access to your resource. It can be the doctor or it can be the housemate who wants to access the, the cameras. So these are the main entities. There are another two APIs apart from the O2.0. Uh, one thing is the resource registration endpoint. So we can talk to that endpoint and register our resources there. And again, the, the permission endpoint, uh, we need to talk and see what are the permissions that we require to uh, access a given resources. Then it introduces another grant type, like uh, authorization code or SAML uh, called UMA grant. So we need to use UMA grant to get the access token. Thereafter, it will go in the normal O2.0 flow. Yeah. Then the fine grain access control. For that one, the, the common standard is the SACML. So in the SACML, uh, there are four entities. Uh, those are the policy uh, administration, how we uh, define and manage the life cycle of the policy, and the policy decision point, whether we allow to access this uh, resource or not. The policy information point, uh, where we decide whether we need to access or not the policy, uh, no, policy information point where we get the additional information to evaluate these policies, policy enforcement point where actually we enforce these policies. And there are also, there are special APIs that we need to consider. One is the policy administration point related API. So with these APIs, we can manage the policies in the system. And the next thing is uh, related to the policy decision point, so the policy enforcement point can talk to the policy decision point and get the policy decision. But SACML is kind of a, a heavy weight. This is not microservice friendly. In the microservice world, we have the open policy agent. This is kind of a lightweight version. So this is also a, a REST and JSON based. So this can define the policies with the JSON kind of language. And this can coexist with your microservice. So this is a kind of replacement to the, the sector. The next uh, important thing is the, the privacy related stuff, the consent management. So as a user, I need to able to manage the consents I given for a service. So I need to see the consent that I have provided. I need to revoke the consents if I like. So uh, the your system should be able to handle this. For that one, you need to have API to manage these consents. And the next thing is, as a user, I should be able to see the data that the organization collected. So I need to see that information, I need to edit that information, or uh, I need to retrieve that information back. So there should be an API to get, the, get that information as well. So this is, these are the two uh, API requirements related to the privacy at the moment. Yes, that's a quick walkthrough on the common identity APIs used. So do you have any questions on this? Yeah.